Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 75, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, this is another casual episode, and actually from now on, they will all be super casual because um, for not this, I guess mental health or whatever, <laughs> for clarity reasons, I'm trying not to put so much pressure on myself to make out, to make um, amazing videos and professional or whatever, because I'm not professional and I'll probably never be a professional uh, podcaster. <laughs> I just do it for fun because I like sharing my stuff and then seeing what other people share and I like the community of it. So I'm going to try not to put so much pressure on myself to make um, perfect backgrounds and stuff. So and plus another reason is actually where my craft room was we've converted it to like a um, greenhouse <laughs> uh, seedling farm whatever. We've got all of our uh, container garden vegetables starting in there and they've taken over so I've actually moved a lot of my yarn and stuff into our bedroom and um, yeah we're just transforming that room into where we're getting all of our seeds started for our porch in a few uh, about a month we can start setting them out after the last frost and then we will be putting that back into a dining room slash sitting room for me for when it's warm outside Jesse can play on the porch while I uh, sit there and watch him and crochet and all that stuff but anyways let's get into the crochet stuff so I actually have some finished objects this week. Um, three of them are things I just did myself. Uh, one's a pattern I'm actually trying to design. And two of them are things that my sister sent me a picture of. So I kind of copied it for her. And then I do get a couple other ones finished. And I've got some whips. I'm not going to show all my whips. Because I do have stuff that I've not touched at all in a few <laughs> weeks. So I don't really see a point in showing their non-progress. But I do have a few that I have worked on. And then I've got some bags here to show you guys. There are still some bags in my shop, um, four or five of them, I can't remember. And then uh, hopefully tonight, tonight, what is today? Today is Wednesday the 13th, I think. Yeah, um, I'm planning on making some more crab bags, which are the um, flex frame ones. I've got, I think, five more fixtures to make uh, some more of those with. And I'm going to make some zipper bags, kind of like this one. This one I made forever ago. This is one of the first bags I ever made, so it's not that great up here. But um, it's they're not super stiff because I can't find my super stiff interfacing. I have some, I just can't find it. So it's they're squishier. They're not like the stiff ones that can stand on their own. But they're big zipper bags. Uh, I have one done already, and then I'm wanting to make, I think, three or four more. I've got them all ready. I just got to sew them. So those will hopefully be going up in the shop, maybe tonight. Uh, but for sure over the next few days so if you want to just keep an eye on there and I will update on probably Instagram and Facebook when I do add those and the uh, crab bags <laughs> but yeah so let's get into the crochet um, I'll talk about the finished oh I left one over there I'm gonna go get that okay <laughs> I got um, I'll show you the ones that were patterns that other people wrote first uh, this one doesn't have its ends woven in because I'm a procrastinator, <laughs> but this is done. And this, some of y'all will notice it because it's Randy's pattern from Random Randy's Ramblings. And she's got a free video tutorial on it and she's also gotten it, um, written out on her website. I'll link the website below because that's the one I followed, the written one, but she's also got a video. But it's the rosy wrap. My hair's in a ponytail. <laughs> and there's ends. <laughs> I gotta deal with ends. But I made it in red. I absolutely love it. I feel like mine came out huge, but uh, that's probably just me. I probably used the wrong something, but I love it. I love the ear warmer part of it. I'll definitely be wearing this this next coming cold season. And I wanted to make this because I thought I could wear it around the house while I'm cleaning and stuff to keep my little fuzzy hairs out of my face. And I just got to finish the ends. <laughs> but yeah, I want to make another one in a variegated color, but I really love this red one. It's actually Red Heart Super Saver Cherry Red. It's not as bright as it's coming off on the camera because of the sunlight. It looks like hot red, <laughs> but it's the cherry red. So it's like a darker, um, deeper red, like a bandana red. But yeah, I love that. It was a super quick pattern. Uh, you could probably make it in one setting. I, it took me a few days, but it's because I kept picking it up and set it back, setting it back down. But yeah, I love it. It's super easy, and I'll definitely be making more of those. All right, the next pattern that I used, a written pattern from somebody else was <laughs> I did this for two reasons one because it was a cute pattern and two because on Llama Mama's uh, March Bingo one of the squares was to make something that represents March and so instantly in my head that made me think of St. Patrick's Day because I'm a holiday ce uh, celebrator <laughs> but um, I made a little potato and I didn't have the right color for his body 
without opening a brand new skein. I didn't want to open a brand new skein for just a little bit of yarn because it's a really small pattern. So I, I had some uh, little bonbons that were gifted to me, so I just used the light brown and then it's kind of like a uh, buff color. But it is Spud the Lucky Potato, and he's an Irish potato, which I thought was funny. But he's just, I mean, he's blown out. <laughs> he's a light brown color, and he's got little potato spots and a little <laughs> uh, leprechaun hat. I thought he was cute. So I made this for um, my square for the Llama Mama um, bingo, but then he's also adorable anyways. And I love having little decorations for every holiday just kind of spread out around my house. I've got green pom-poms hanging up there for St. Patrick's Day. And in my hallway, all the doors have um, different St. Patrick's Day themed things. And right here, this leprechaun sticking his feet out of gold. That is a Heidi Yates pattern. And I got random little shamrocks hanging around my house. <laughs> but yeah, I just love decorating for holidays. It makes me happy and Jesse likes it. So, uh this little potato, he's setting up on our movie stand, but once Je Devin, not Devin, Jesse sees it, uh, he'll probably want to play with it. But I think it's cute. He kind of looks like a peanut. <laughs> and he'd look more like a potato if I had had a darker, lighter brown. Uh, but this is like that little bonbon. I can't remember the brand name on it. I think it's one of those you get from like Amazon. It was gifted to me. His spots are uh, coffee, Red Heart Super Sarah coffee. And the green, the black, and the yellow are all... No, it's not. No, it's not. I lied. These are all bonbons. Yeah, I opened the pack and I just got all the colors out of it. So these are all that. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> but it looks like the ones that you just order from Amazon. I've seen a lot of people buy them. But yeah. I don't know why I was thinking I had Red Heart, but it's it's the bonbons. Alright, now I have three more um, finished objects. Oh, no, no. I got one more. One more pattern one. <laughs> I lied. Uh, this last one I used another pattern from someone else was the fourth block for the 2019 Scrap Buster Square along hosted by um, Unraveled Mitten. And I just realized I didn't do my ends on this one either. <laughs> I procrastinated my ends this week apparently. But it was the fourth square which is called the Sedge Stitch Square. So it's this one. I made it with Red Heart Super Saver Takura. I think it's how you say that, something like that. It's like a turquoise color. It's a little bit blown out, but that's okay. I like this one a lot. This this stitch was super fast. It's one of those that you can remember it and just fly through it. I made this, I think, last Saturday or Sunday when I was hanging out at my in-laws house when Jesse was playing. So well, I made some of it there. I think I finished it at home. <laughs> I can't remember. But yeah, I really like this pattern. This is another one that would be a really cute pattern for um like a baby blanket or something because it's textured but not like overly textured. <laughs> I like this one a lot. So that's my fourth square. The fifth one actually came out this morning so I haven't started it yet but I'm hoping to start it soon. Um, let's see, there's going to be 24 squares. So I may make the today's green again. I want to cycle back through the colors that I've been using these brighter uh, red hearts. Alright, that was my last um, pattern from somebody else. So I did make two um, embroidery hoops for my sister. She embroiders and cross stitches. And she's seen someone on Instagram post embroidery hoops with uh, crochet borders around them. So she asked me if I could make her some. So she sent me a picture of what she was talking about and then I just kind of winged it. I think it turned out pretty good. She's going to have to get longer screws for the top of the, um, the hoops. <clears throat> but I know you can get those. So, But yeah, I made two of them and the ends aren't woven in on one of them. So I made a black one. Don't know how good you can see it. <laughs> but it's they're just on the outside uh, hoop. Because then you would put the cloth in there and tighten it up with this one so that the picture would be nice and taut. And then I also made, she wanted a teal color. This was the only teal color I had so I asked her first and she liked it. This is a green teal. I didn't know if she wanted a green teal or a blue teal. <laughs> but um, I think this is actually teal by Red Heart. And that other one was just black by Red Heart. But yeah, so I think they turned out pretty good. This one turned out better than the black one. The black one was the first one I did. And I didn't connect them. But the second one I did connect them a little bit. And that will be hidden. Once the cloth is on there, it will help pull that. And the, uh, the screw thingy will uh, help hide that little strap. But yeah, I think these turned out pretty good. Hopefully she likes them and they work for what she uh, needs them for. Pretty cool. 
And the last uh, finished object I have is one that I actually, I seen a sewn uh, version of this on a local Facebook site that I have. Um, it's, it's a store, she's an independent store, she sells all kinds of different stuff. But they, there's a building here, <laughs> it's kind of like a flea market but it's for handcrafted things only and um you kind of have like commission tables like you you they when you pay for the spot it stays there like forever as long as you pay for it and you put your stuff on there and people buy it you know that kind of store <laughs> i don't know what it's called but um <clears throat> she had sewn ones like this and i thought well i could crochet something similar to that so this was my um first draft i'm gonna make the the actual pattern for it a little bit bigger because this one turned out small i made it last night while sitting in bed watching um a Pandora video on Facebook for the Pandora jewelry. Is that what it's called? Pop. I can't remember if it's Pandora or Paparazzi. I think it's Paparazzi. Whatever that $5 jewelry company is. I was watching one of those videos and making this. But it's a towel topper. I put a picture of it on uh, Facebook and had people guess. And people guessed immediately what it was. And um, there were some other good ideas for other things though too. But uh, my plan is to make a bunch for different holidays hopefully. And then... Um, I'm thinking about selling like the PDF pattern for like a dollar and then uh, maybe making a video tutorial for free <laughs> for um, people who like videos over written patterns. But yeah, so here, oh, it's all blurred. It's all, there you go. <laughs> it's just a little bunny and there's a towel topper ring in here that I got to, I'm working on the pattern for that to make it easier to put in. So you would put the towel in there and it would hang down and then the ears. Or what you would put around your stove uh, bar or your handles to your drawers or whatever. And then you would button it on there. I chose a white button so it would blend better. But you could use, you know, like a cute flower or whatever. Uh, but it's a little Easter bunny. <laughs> little heart-shaped nose. And I just thought he was super cute. So he would hang there with a the towel down below it. And I want to make a bunch for different holidays. But this is awful small. This came out really small. So I'm going to um, redo the pattern and make it bigger. But I like the ear pattern that I, I chose to do. So I will keep the same stitch work. I'll just try to make them a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think it turned out pretty cute. The, in the inside looks horrible because I didn't weave in the end. Since it was just a prototype, I just tied knots. So that I could just see what it would look like uh, finished. But it works. I had a towel in this last night, an Easter themed one, and um, was checking it out. And it works. It's just a little tight when you put a towel in there. So I want to make it a little bit wider and a smidge longer. And then I want to figure out a better way to do a tutorial for how to make the loop on the inside for um, the towel to hang through. Because I just kind of attached the yarn in here and then chained 12, I think, and then attached it on the other side to make a loop. <laughs> but... Uh, doing that's easy, but explaining it in a written form is kind of difficult. So I want to find a way to be able to explain it to people that wouldn't confuse them. So, yeah. I think it's going to be cute. I want to make a bunch of them. <laughs> so, yeah. That was my first prototype. So you'll probably be seeing some of these in the near future a lot. I was hoping to get this one up and ready for uh, before Easter time. So maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. It just inspiration struck me last night and I popped it out and it's cute. So I think I'm going to try to keep working on it. <laughs> that is all my finished objects this week. Which is actually a pretty good amount for me. <laughs> when I didn't really think I was going to get a lot. Because I didn't really crochet much. Um, most of this was all weekend crochet. During the week I was really busy and kind of bummed out. I just have some personal things going on that... Um, not bad things, it's just I was, you know, I was looking forward to something and then it ended up having to get canceled. So it's, it bummed me out a little bit. But that's okay. So on to whips. I have a bunch of whips, but I only have three, I think, that I've worked on a lot. So there are only three I'm going to share. I'm trying to look and see which one's which. Okay, I'll show this one first. This one is um, a yarn that I showed y'all, I think, last week. And I, I wasn't for sure what I was going to make with it yet. But I liked it and I wanted to make some sort of like sea animal with it. And a lot of y'all gave me suggestions. And then I did um, just kind of shop around, browse around uh, Ravelry. And I finally found a pattern that I thought would be cute. I hope I have enough yarn for it because the pattern is um, worked in worsted weight. And this is a DK weight. And I'm using a smaller hook. So I'm hoping that, you know, the, it all works out good. <laughs> but I'm going to show it to y'all. And this is that hand dyed yarn that the company no longer exists that was gifted to me. Um, I can't remember the name of it now, but I know the colorway is blueberry. 
and um, this is the cake of it that I caked up with my new yarn smith and this is it working up I think it's working up really pretty it doesn't remind me anything at all of blueberry <laughs> I don't exactly know what it reminds me of but it's all of the earth tones in it the, the blues and browns I love I love anything earthy <laughs> But it's working out really pretty. This is what I'm working on so far. <laughs> Any guesses <laughs> before I tell you? I was thinking to make a whale or something, but then I found this pattern I thought it was cute. And actually, another YouTuber has made the same pattern recently. But it is going to be a manatee. <laughs> uh, this is the same exact pattern that Billy from the Crafty Floridian used recently that she made a big manatee with. And I thought I would make a blue manatee. Uh, he's got his wrinkles here. You can't really see them. But once I get him done, they'll be kind of cinched right there where you, uh, where he's bendable. So he looks like a big fat manatee. <laughs> but uh, I got to put his eyeballs on. I actually have it because I'm trying to figure out a good place to put them to look good. <laughs> so um, I'm just about to where I need to decrease it a little bit, I think. That's why I stopped because I want to do the eyeballs first. And I think he's turning out cute. I just love the way the color's working up. Got my little teapot <laughs> um, stitch marker. My sister got these for free. There's two of them. I got a blue one and a pink one from <clears throat> the Clay Bean Company on Instagram. She has a website too, but she's really active on Instagram. She uh, Every now and then she sells mystery hooks, and my sister buys them for me every now and then. And she was running a special sometime that if you buy a hook, you get a free teapot stitch marker. So she bought me two of them, so I got two of them. I think it was the Christmas before last. I can't remember, but they're cute. I had to convert them to this kind of stitch marker because that's kind of like the leverbacks. It was a little lobster claw and I have a hard time opening those when they're little. Anyways, this pattern is the Chubby Manatee by Hooked by Katie and it'll be linked below. I'm hoping that it works out good. I hope I have enough yarn to make all his little body parts. If not, I'll just have to rip it back and think of something else to make. But uh, yeah, he just, he didn't look like anything right now. But I love the way the yarn's working out. It's so pretty. So it's going to be messy. Okay, my next whip that's kind of a finished off whip. <laughs> and I still didn't weave in the ends. I've been really bad at that. But I finally finished the whole, the top section of the Jada and Stitches 2019 calendar blanket. Finished the light green and the blue. This has turned out way bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's going to be a really good size blanket. But I finally finished all the, the base. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I did that last week. I don't know if I showed that last week. I think it was still, I was still working on it last week. But, so I'm ready for the next part, which, uh, she's been putting them out at the end of the month. So, then March is probably won't come out until the last week of March. But, um, I'm hoping, I don't know if that'll be the border or if that'll actually start being some of the pieces. The border maybe last, I don't know. But I'm, I'm loving this so far. The blanket was really easy. <laughs> so hopefully all the little appliques and stuff will be easy. <laughs> But I'm looking forward to seeing all the things that she designs for that. And yeah, so my last whip is actually a knitted one. <laughs> um, I never really had a huge interest in learning to knit uh, until recently. And by recently, I mean like the last year or so. I've been really, really, really wanting to make knit socks. And uh, I'd love to make sweaters like Erin from Gimme Yarn 148 makes. She pops out sweaters in like a week. And they're really nice, color work, beautiful sweaters. So I kind of want to do that. I want to learn how to knit a little bit better. I used to knit more than I crocheted way back when I was like 10 and 11. I, I knitted. And then I quit knitting and started crocheting. And then I've been crocheting forever <laughs> since I was 12. And um, I knitted a little bit here and there. And then I tried to learn a little bit more knitting when I was pregnant. But I was super pregnant and I just gave it up because I was about to have a baby and didn't want to deal with it. So I did... Um, quit knitting and then recently I, I contacted a few of my friends on uh, from YouTube and all that that knit to ask them about knitting needles to buy and a lot of people suggested different ones and I didn't want to buy super expensive ones in case I didn't get really into it so I did just I went ahead and went with uh, the Knitters Pride Pro they sell them at uh, Hobby Lobby they were $29.99 but I used a 40% uh, coupon so it came out to like 18 something I think <laughs> And um, I paid 26 that day because I got the Knitter's Pride set and then I got an, a smaller uh, circular thing, <laughs> needle thing for um, socks that I needed. 
that I think I need. I don't know if I need it. But this is the set that I did end up buying. If you can see it. It's just the Knitter's Pride uh, Interchangeable Acrylic Deluxe Set. It comes with sizes um, 3.5, 3 3.75, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 5, 5, 6, 6.5, and 8. Plus it comes with two... Um, Let's see, it comes with four cords to create needle length, uh, 24 inches, 32 inches, and 40 inches. Plus, it comes with the little keys to uh, to tighten them on there and um, the caps. Yeah, I didn't think that was too bad for a beginner set when there's some knitting needle sets are really expensive. And if I get into knitting a lot, I will <laughs> I will definitely invest money into getting a really nice set. I already can tell just from the little bit of knitting I've done since I bought this set. And then I also bought these, um, what is it, Knitology, they're a 16 inch circular and it's a size 2, 2.75 uh, for socks or whatever. <laughs> but this is the uh, set, the, the one that's missing is the one I'm using currently. And so far this is pretty decent, I think this is decent for learning on. But I can already tell that I don't like the plastic, the way it grips the yarn. I'm definitely going to be upgrading to the metal ones if I do continue knitting. And uh, I know there's a lot of really nice brands out there. And uh, some of them are expensive. But some of them you can buy either in big sets that are super expensive. Or you can buy them a little of time to build up your collection. But I think if I get into knitting big time this year, I'll just get Devin to buy me one of the nice sets for Christmas. I'll just put that on my list and be like, give me this. But, um the chow goo or something I don't know I'll, I'll probably get a couple like I said if I get into knitting if I'll start enjoying it I'll get a couple of each brand just to try them out see which one I like better but I think I will like the metal ones better than these plastic ones because sometimes it's hard to get these to do what I want them to do and I use metal crochet hooks and I haven't used these little knitting needles yet but they're the metal ones so I need to try them to see if I like it because usually metal helps it to slide around easier and this plastic seems to like keep it from sliding so I think this will be a good learning set and if I eventually do um, upgrade to a better set for myself I'll probably just give this away to someone else who wants to learn to knit uh, if it's still in good condition but yeah it's good for what I need right now and I will upgrade whenever I need to upgrade but my knitting project let me dig it out it's a washcloth <laughs> or dishcloth it's the basic one that everybody makes. I just wanted, because it's been so long since I really knitted, I wanted to just re-familiarize myself with um, the stitches and the holding of the needles and the yarn. <laughs> I just, in the last year or so, I learned to finally hold my yarn in crocheting in my left hand instead of my right hand, because I learned in my right hand. And now with knitting, I have to hold the yarn back in my right hand because I cannot do it with my left hand. I tried, and I just can't get the tension right. So this dishcloth, although my stitches are great looking, I think, I haven't messed up any stitches yet. I did forget to increase a few times, so the, the corner is kind of funky shaped. But, you know, it's okay, I'm learning. I'm allowed to be bad at it. <laughs> but I'm just using, um, I think it's the cotton yarn that you can get at Walmart. I can't remember what it's called. But my sister bought it for me for my birthday, I think, last year or the year before that. And I've had it for forever. But this is all i got so far. <laughs> I think my stitches look good this part but down here you can see where I forgot to increase a few times so it's one it makes the corner look funny shaped but also there's no little hole there the increase hole or your yarn over hole whatever that's called <laughs> I don't know the terminology but yeah so I love 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 I love homemade dishcloths in general but I love knitted ones because they're such a thinner texture than the crochet ones that they fold better and I was gifted to I think in 2017. I think it was the same person that gifted me the manatee yarn. I'm pretty sure it was. I have a video about it. <laughs> but uh, she gifted me two of her knit um, dishcloths. And they were the same pattern, but they were much bigger. And I love them. I use them all the time. Those are my favorite ones. I have a bunch of dish dishcloths that I crocheted, but I always choose those two knitted ones over my crocheted ones. So unless the knitted ones are just sturdy, they're the ones that I'm using. So I wanted to make myself a bunch of knitted ones and then I could probably make some for practice and just give them to my sister and my mom and all that. Just everybody gets knitted dishcloths because I want to practice my stitches and then find, once I'm comfortable with this one, I can find a more detailed 
dishcloth pattern to work up. And it's kind of the same thing as in crochet. You know, a lot of people make different squares to learn different stitches. I can just make a bunch of different dishcloths or a bunch of um, knit stitches. So my goal for knitting is to make socks and sweaters and hats. Because there's a lot of um, hats out there that I love too in, in knit. Like I love the, um, the one that's got the little sheep around it. <laughs> And uh, sometimes color work just looks better in knitting because the stitches are a lot smaller. And um, I've got a lot of finger and weight yarn that I've acquired through either people gifting it to me or uh, from Knit Crate that I want to knit with instead of crochet. Because to me, knitting is easier with thinner yarn than crocheting is. And crocheting with thinner yarn usually creates um, more holes. And, you know, like this... You know, I like the, the solidness. I don't know. I like crochet and knit both. I love crochet, actually. Crochet is my passion. <laughs> and I will always crochet. So don't worry about this ever becoming like a knit-only channel because it's not going to happen. It's going to be crochet 98% and then maybe a smidge of knit because I, I'll probably never be an expert knitter because it is a lot slower than crochet. And that's one thing. Like this stinking dishcloth, super easy pattern, but it's taking me, I don't even know when I started this, four or five days ago. Longer than that. It's a week ago. A week ago tomorrow. Because I got these needles on Thursday. And I started it that night. But, um... Yeah. I'm just learning. I just want to try to learn a little bit more knit. And make some of the things that I want to make with knit. I will probably never, ever make knitted uh, amigurumis. Because I don't like the way the stitch looks on it. As opposed to the crochet ones. And I will never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever make a knit blanket because I can only imagine if I ever started a knit blanket, it would take me the rest of my life. Except one. There's one knit blanket that I do want to make, and it's one that Erin is actually making at uh, Give Me Yarn 148. She's been working on it for forever, too. <laughs> but she uses her scraps of fingering away or in mini skeins that people gift her and stuff. She um, is making these little squares and sewing them all together. And it's supposed to be like a memory blanket, you know, um, like your friends gift you uh, little scraps and stuff. And I just love the way that looks. I've always, ever since she showed that, I've wanted to um, make it too. And there are crochet versions of that same square because actually one of the skeins of yarn I had, I think it was I Love This Yarn, um, had the same exact pattern on it, but it was a crochet version. But the squares were just a smidge bigger. So, uh, I'd like to make that if I ever started getting, like, mini skeins or if I had just leftover bits of finger and weight yarn. But, yeah, with all that being said, that's my knit whip. <laughs> a little tiny washcloth. This is actually really tiny. I'm over, I've already started decreasing it just because that's what the pattern is. But if I make it again, I'm going to make it much bigger, like the ones that were gifted to me because they're, like, twice the size of this. They're really big, and I love that. I use those all the time. But, uh, I'm using... It's a US 7, but it is a 4.5 um, needle. So it's basically the size of like a G crochet hook. <laughs> so, uh, and the green. And I like the interchangeable so far. So far it hasn't um, rubbed off, but I feel like it will the more I use it. Because it's just like printed on there. It's not like engraved in there. So I imagine after a lot of use that would rub off. But they are different colors. So if you use a set a lot, you could just remember what size a certain color is because they're all different none of them are repeated the colors and um so far these little bits where they connect has been good but i haven't used them a ton so i if i do continue knitting i will probably do a, a little bit better detailed uh, review of these needles after i use them for a while because you can't really review them from using them once I would need to use them for like months to see if the uh, writing does wear off or if this part weakens because that's one thing I've heard about a lot of the cheaper interchangeables is that this part here weakens and then you can't screw it in there good or something or sometimes the cord will detach from the little screwy part <laughs> um, so yeah so I'll review that as I use it more same thing with my Swift that I bought um, last week or whenever that was a couple weeks ago uh, I've only used it once so I can't really say oh this is an amazing swift because I haven't really you know used it after I use it a whole lot more I can then give a better um, what am I say review on it <laughs> yeah so there's my little knit project it's living in this big old bag because I was keeping all the needles in there and there's actually two projects in here at one time. This weekend, this is the one I carried around with me everywhere. It had that square from the Unraveled Mitten in it and this knit 
uh, pattern because I was wanting to uh, take them both with me in case I wanted to work on something or a different one. But yeah, so there you go. Learning to knit. <laughs> Relearning to knit, I guess. All right, so I'm gonna show you these bags a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and hop off because I got some stuff I gotta do around the house today. Jesse's coming back home tomorrow and I've got to, I've got some plants in there I need to put in a different container and I've got some just cleaning stuff to do. I got chicken marinating for dinner tonight. It's going to be grilled. All right, these are all the bags that are currently still in the shop. I've got this pretty green flower sack the sacks are the ones that don't have box bottoms. They do turn out larger than the box bottom bags. I prefer the sacks myself over the box bottom ones. And it has, whoops, a notion pouch. And then I have this random Pokemon <laughs> notion pouch. Uh, for Christmas, last Christmas, my in-laws gifted me a yard of this pattern and a yard of uh, the other Pokemon print I had. It's like a black one. Uh, and I made myself two bags, one of each with notion pouches. And then the other yard, the yardage that I had left, I made and sold. So everything's sold so far except this one. So there's a Pokemon um, notion pouch and the inside is yellow. You can hear the band, the high school band is practicing. <laughs> They're like right outside. And then I have a sack of this cute fox print. I love this print. It's got like a red color. I thought it matched good. And this was just a scrap that I think, I think Carla, I think this is either one that Carla gifted me or a lady that was moving out of an apartment near us. She gifted me a bunch of material. Can't remember which one came from whom. <laughs> but that's also got a notion pouch. Not that one. This one. With the same liner. And then there's another fox one, I think. Oh yeah, this it's a um, this notion pouch will go along with a large zipper bag. I haven't made it yet, but it, it's the same fox print, and the inside's like a blue print with little not really flowers, but they're like a flower shaped dots. <laughs> so that will go with a zipper bag that I haven't made yet, but it's coming. And then I have one left of the let me poof it out. The love cookies is what I'm calling it. It's technically a Valentine's Day print, but it, I mean love is all the time. <laughs> so uh, I think this is a super cute print there you go and it's got a matching notions pouch ooh it's blown out and I think it's polka dotted on the inside yeah the, the project bag is that too this is kind of just like the set that Z ordered from me and I got this pretty print this is a box bomb bag and then there will also be a zipper bag with the same print I just haven't made it yet well, you can't see it good. It's so bright. This right here is like a pale blue color. I thought this was real pretty. It's got the gold. Really pretty. And again, it's got a matching notions pouch. They're just white on the inside. I was trying to use up a lot of my scrap yarns. There will also be a large zipper bag of the love print. And then I got a large zipper bag of this print. Apples. <laughs> it's just apples. I can't remember the color. It's green. But I actually have this bag made. I just haven't done anything with it yet. <laughs> and then I will have a large zipper bag of this print that that goes with. And then the last one is cute bluebirds. This I think was gifted to me by um, Carla. Just cute little bluebirds. And it's pink on the inside. And it's got a zipper bag. Which is also pink, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I will have five more crab bags, and they're just going to be random prints. I think there's two with owls on it, and then there's a red and white striped one. Uh, there's one with oranges in it, and I think a purpley one. I can't remember. I already I just got some of my scraps out that were about the same size, cut them out, and because uh, I'm trying to use up a lot of my scrap material. That's like a lot of these liners are uh, the scrap bits I've had, so I wanted to use them up. And I'm trying to shop my stash, so like I'll look and see what material I have, and then when I go buy material, I will buy coordinating material so I can use up what I already had on hand, plus just a little bit of new that I had to buy. So that's like this birds. I've had this for a while, and um, I've just had to go buy some liner, and I thought the pink was cute, so I just bought the pink liner for it, and I'm just trying to like destash a little bit of my material 
and so that I can buy more because <laughs> I want to go buy I want to go to like Joann's and buy a bunch of um what am I trying to say the pop culture ones like Star Wars and Star Trek and different movies and tv shows and cartoons and stuff because those are usually really popular and I like them too <laughs> but yeah so I think that's everything it's kind of a long video so I'm gonna go ahead and hop off and get all this stuff put up and all that so everything all the things I talked about will be linked below um I can think about it and the shop will be linked below if you want to check it out and I'm pretty sure the Nick Crate deal is still going on if you've not subscribed to Nick Crate before and you want to subscribe this month of March uh you get the March Crate plus you get a pass crate for free so it's like getting $126 worth of yarn and patterns for $29.99 so that's a really good deal if you've never been a member of Knit Crate or I guess if you wanted to cheat the system a little <laughs> you could um subscribe as like your spouse's name or something and send it to like your in-laws house I've seen that some people have been doing that and uh you can cancel Knit Crate at any time if you just want to participate in this one deal you can get the, the two crates for the price of one and then cancel it so that you don't have to pay for next month and all that you just have to cancel before the first of the month um of next month so that you won't get charged but yeah so um I have, I have my link my knit crate link is below too if you're interested in that check it out if not it's cool <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and hop off so i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys